Good morning. Would you butter a couple of rolls for me there, please? I could try the peanut butter. What gum you chewing? My breath stinks. Excuse me? Play by night, go away from here. Once again, an excuse to run the creepiest thing ever <laughs> created in edit in this building's history. Uh, Keith Costa, spring daydreaming. We've been hitting these um, these NL Central clubs, Keith. You started with the Cardinals. We dove in on the Cubs. How about the Cincinnati Reds, a team that CY and I feel pretty strongly about could be a disruptor this year? Yeah, it was a quick bounce back from them. If you think about the last couple of years and their win totals going up and down, they were at 83 two years ago, 62 two years ago, and last year, 82. A 20-win increase was the second largest in the majors last season. You see them sandwiched here between some pretty good company, the World Series champion, and the best regular season team in the American League last year. Now, obviously, the biggest thing with the Reds was the youth movement they got into last year. 16 players made their debut, 23 rookies, both the most in the majors. So we'll dig into some of those players here. And unless you were really locked in on the Central, Maddie, and the Reds in particular, I don't know if people realized the kind of season that Matt McLean put together. These are the guys that have put up that war in that few games in their debut season in the last 123 seasons. Pretty good company here with two of the best players in the game in Tatis and Alvarez. Now, the headliner, obviously, last year was L.A. De La Cruz. The question going forward is, will his production be able to match his tools? Now, he's young, obviously, plenty of room to grow. But he was long on the highlights and short on the production after that first month in the major leagues. You see the 213 batting average and almost 35% strikeout rate in his first go-round in the major leagues. Now, you want to talk about a more consistent young player last season? What have you done for me lately? How about Novelli Marte? Look at these numbers across double A, triple A, and the major leagues. Basically the same production at all three levels. Now we're talking about a short sample size, obviously. He did have a hamstring issue in winter ball. He was shut down for a little bit, but he's expected to be ready for the start of the season. The thing here, guys, all three of these guys can play shortstop. So how will they figure out their infield with all these young players? Who's going to play where? Who's going to step up and take that next step? in their sophomore season. Now on the pitching side, same thing, a ton of youth. These were their innings pitch leaders last season, all 26 or younger. The issue, as you see, they couldn't get them all going at the same time. Some were better early, some wore down as the season went on. None of them made it to 150 innings. So can they get any of these guys healthy and can they get a more consistent performance from their pitchers? 40 pitchers used last season, guys, was a franchise record. The one wild card in that mix, Frankie Montas, a guy who only made one appearance last season, but as recently as two years ago was a workhorse. 187 innings in this day and age is quite the total. They also have Nick Martinez in the mix. He can pitch out of the bullpen or the rotation and not much difference in his performance either. The number, Maddie, 82 and a half wins, plus 400 to win the Central. How are we feeling about the Red Lakes this year? Mm, 82 and a half, man, that's the perfect number for them. And uh, it, to me, it feels like it could go one of two ways. The Reds could turn into what we've thought the Blue Jays and the and the Mets to be the last couple of years, the Blue Jays are probably better comp, like the team that's on the verge of taking that next step and being a dominant postseason team. I think they're that good. I think they're close. Um, the division's crowded. 82 and a half seems like a doable number for them. They have passed the Brewers as the third longest shot in the division, right? Because the earlier odds, just as early as last week, it read St. Louis, Chicago, Milwaukee, Cincinnati. Now Keith's telling us that the Reds are plus 450 or 400. Uh, I like the Reds. I'm bullish on them, and, and why not Cincinnati this year? Yeah, when I look at the odds, it, it makes sense on why I'm not the one in Vegas making these odds because if, if I were to rank my favorites, I think I'm going Brewers and Reds. I don't understand why the Cardinals would shoot all the way from last up to first place when, yeah, they've added Sonny Gray, but you bring in Gibson, you bring in Lynn. It, at this point, just like Keith was talking about, it's pretty much all down to the wild cards. What guys yeah. are going to overperform or get their game back? Out of a, out of a Frankie Montas, a Graham Ashcraft, I can trust those guys. I, I'm going to trust that those guys will have a bounce back, bounce back season. I trust that Ashcraft stuff will play. Montas, if he stays healthy, he'll be fine. If I'm looking at the Cardinals, how much of a bounce back am I expected from Lynn? Gibson's been solid. But if I'm looking at a team overall, the infield pieces that they have, keeping Jonathan India, him probably moving to the outfield, they have a lot of weapons on the offensive side. And I think if you get a little bit of pitching, they'll be right there in the mix at the end of it. I'm with you. There's some value on yeah. the Reds this year. They're going to be a fun team to watch this season for sure.